Hey there guys, Jordan in the know here, and I'm making this video because of a pretty complicated topic. I was writing my one year later review for the OnePlus One until I came across the Cyanogen mod portion of the review. And if you know OnePlus's history with Cyanogen, there was a lot of explaining that needed to be done, so I decided to do my research. I love Cyanogen, I love the work Cyanogen puts into their operating system. Uh, they're really great. So I decided to do some research on this awesome company and I found a lot of stuff that I actually didn't know prior to this research and so uh, I decided to make a video on it. So if you didn't already know, Cyanogen Mod is what's called a custom ROM and custom ROMs are based off of Android but include some tweaks and changes to the code by the community and developers that make it into something of its own. Some custom ROMs specialize in battery efficiency, some specialize in performance, customization, and breathing new life into older hardware, and Cyanogen Mod as a whole was really good at all of this stuff. It was good at bringing in new features, it was good at being faster, thanks to its killer development team by the way. And because of these awesome features, because of these awesome performance enhancements, that's how Cyanogen Mod became as popular as they are today. At this point, they claim to have around 50 million users, and this sort of popularity has opened them up to new possibilities. They started with the Cyanogen Mod Installer, which basically was a piece of software that you downloaded to your PC where you could just hook up your phone and it would install Cyanogen Mod for you. It was genius. It was the easiest way to install Cyanogen Mod on your phone, and obviously before that, it was a very tedious process. You had to unlock the bootloader, you had to do all of this miscellaneous stuff, and there was a lot of steps and there was a lot of places to screw up. Cyanogen Mod Installer made that super easy. It, I used it myself, you plug in your phone, plug it in the USB cable, plug it in your PC, and just click install. Obviously you have to accept a few things, blah, blah, blah. And it was it, it was that easy, it was that simple. This was the perfect gateway to get as many people on Cyanogen Mod as possible. And basically the project just got scrapped. It's still online, but it still has very little device support. It doesn't have any of the newer, more recent uh, phones on there. No Galaxy S6, no HD. GC1 M9. It's a real shame, actually, because if, like, think about that, Cyanogen Mod, a lot, it's very popular. A lot of people want a Cyanogen Mod on their phones, and I know a lot of people who wouldn't want to bother because of this tedious installation pro process. This was the easiest, easiest way for Cyanogen Mod just to grow and, and develop, but I digress. A few months later, after the launch of the Cyanogen Mod Installer, they launched Cyanogen Inc., which is basically a piece of the company that has branched off to officially commercialize Cyanogen Mod by pre-installing it on their devices. From that point on, Cyanogen Mod and Cyanogen Mod Inc. produce essentially two completely different products. Cyanogen Mod Inc. is in charge of Cyanogen Mod OS, and these normally run on the OnePlus One, the U Euphoria, the Eureka, and I'll leave the link to the rest. These phones are preloaded with Cyanogen OS and have a completely different development team. Cyanogen OS is more similar to Fire OS and Tizen in the sense that it's trying to fray away from Android. As Android stands right now, each Android phone that comes out right now with the omission of Chinese Android phones have to have Google Play services pre-installed. This means Google Now, Google Maps, uh, Google Plus, and these services have to take center stage over any other third-party services. That's why we don't see the Amazon App Store. That's why we don't see as much of S Voice anymore. Unless overall manufacturer bloatware. This is Google's attempt to make Android just more similar among all of their devices. Uh, and it's definitely good. There's a lot of really heavily skinned versions of Android out there that are hard to update, that perform like crap, and Google just wants their main features just to be streamlined across all of their Android devices. And if Cyanogen Incorporated just wanted their operating system to be a competitor to Google's Android and uh, Samsung's Tizen, that'd be great, that'd be awesome. Uh, competition inspires innovation, obviously. But it gets weird, uh, an Android lover like me, trying to support uh, Cyanogen OS when they make a bold statement that they want to take Android away from Google. Now, this is also really awesome, and at the same time, it's really strange, <laughs> obviously. Uh, first off, Cyanogen OS is based off of Android, so whatever that means to them, uh, I guess nothing. <laughs> and um, 
Cyanogen Inc. plans on doing this by making Cyanogen OS so open source, just like Android was in the beginning, by the way, to the point where companies can't resist hopping on the operating system. They can't resist getting on Cyanogen OS for the sole purpose for these manufacturers to install their third-party services. So for example, Samsung S Voice, that could see a return if it was to go on Cyanogen. This is all hypothetical, by the way. Uh, so there's a few really big problems with that. Uh, one of those being that Cyanogen wants big manufacturers like Samsung, HTC, screw it. Cyanogen wants even little manufacturers like obviously Micromax uh, and all those other, they're not just other, but you know what I mean, uh, lesser known. Anyway, <laughs> they want the attention of these manufacturers. They want these manufacturers to take Cyanogen Incorporated seriously and the biggest problem is that they're uh, just really uh, immature. <laughs> immature is the best way to describe it. The whole situation with OnePlus and uh, Micromax uh, and OnePlus shipping their phones in India, yeah, that was a huge reflection on how they do business. And if I was a manufacturer, would I trust Cyanogen Incorporated to provide me with updates, to provide me with being able to launch phones overseas, or am I going to trust Google's Android? You see, you see where the problem is, Cyanogen, Cyanogen. Um, <laughs> the problem is that you want people to take you seriously when you yourselves don't take you seriously. Um, which is weird. Uh, they have a good product. They have a great product. They have talented developers. And, oh, and speaking of talented developers, they also have this problem with keeping their devices updated. Uh, a lot of their devices, including the OnePlus One, unless... So this is where the problems lie. Uh, they are biting off, hypothetically speaking, biting off more than they can chew. They cannot handle this kind of uh, this kind of development. And if, if, long story short, if you want manufacturers to take you seriously, provide, provide, provide. Uh, I'm rambling now. So I hope that helped you guys out. The difference between Cyanogen Mod Incorporated and Cyanogen Mod. Cyanogen Mod is a community-based uh, operating system that covers that supports a lot of devices. Cyanogen Incorporated is based off of Cyanogen Mod, but is commercialized. It's supposed to run preloaded on as many devices as possible and be seen the same way as normal Android would. How anyway. This has been Jordan in the Know. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been more of a uh, more of a relaxed video, and I appreciate you guys for watching. I really just wanted to make a video like this. I found out a lot about Cyanogen, uh, and I hope this helped you gain a better understanding. If you want fast updates, go with Cyanogen Mod. If you want weird discrepancy issues, go with Cyanogen, Cyanogen Incorporated. That's enough out of me for today. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, this has been Jordan in the Know, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.